Hey, this is OXDF, and today we're going to look at a binary from the gopher box from Hack the Box. Um, this is the root step for a hard box, and uh, I think the expectation is that you're going to do some reverse engineering and actually like look at the assembly and figure out what's going on. Um, I was actually able to solve it without diving into the assembly at all, just by playing with the application a little bit, um, observing where overwrites happened, uh, where there was some overflows, etc., and uh, exploiting a use after free to and a uh, path to, uh, path hijack to get execution. So I never actually opened it in, in Ghidra. And in fact, right now I'm uh, I still haven't opened it in Ghidra. We're gonna we're gonna do in this video. We're gonna jump in and take a look at what this binary actually looks like. So um, for a bit of background before we do that, the basic well actually I'll show you when we jump in. So let's go ahead let's go ahead and take a look. Um, I've got here the directory with the notes app. I can run it. Um, the things we'll learn very quickly, I'll do just a quick overview of the functionality. Um, I can create a user and a username. If I now show the select option two, I can, it shows back that I'm a user and I have a role user. Um, if I try to, that the role thing's important because if I try to run role number eight, it says you don't have the admin role, so you can't get there. Um, I can delete my user. And now if I try to view it, um, interesting. There's actually something there. That was not what I expected, but uh, clearly something weird happen there. That, that's odd. Um, if I create my user again, uh, hey, 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 if you view the data, it's there, delete it. Um, I have no idea why it's saying 2z2v. Okay, we'll look at that. Um, I can write a note. Um, in fact, I'm going to create a user first, and then I'm going to write a note. And if I write a note, uh, hello, this is OXDF. Hope you enjoy this video. And uh, it exited. Um, that, that, that happens, right? It's not a very robust binary. Or, uh, so if I come in here and let's just create another binary again and say something a little bit more, sh or another user, say something a little shorter, like uh, we'll do the, the old sec, please subscribe. I can type, uh, that didn't crash. And so we can actually show the note. Um, there's a note, please subscribe. Uh, number six is not implemented. Seven, I can delete the note. And so now if I go back and try to show it again with five, it says null. So um, I, could, I already showed up. I try to back up the note and say I don't have the admin role. Um, I can delete my user and still try to back up and still says I don't have the admin role. And we, we saw that even though the username gets kind of screwed up when I delete the user, the role does not. So um, right away, I've got a suspicion, and this is how I solved the box, that there's some kind of pointer here that's pointing to memory um, that has been freed potentially and is used by something else. Um, but the pointer still works and the user thing is there. Um, interestingly, I will show you, if we exit and we run this and we try to show user information before I create a user, I get first create a user. So there is, in theory, that's probably what the binary should always do. If you delete a user, it goes back to, hey, you need to create a user, not, I'm just going to show you this empty thing. Um, so that's part of the problem. So we can exploit this. Um, I'll show you real quick the way to exploit this. This is in, if you want a full detail, it's in my blog post. Um, we create a user. We'll create a SDF. We delete the user. And now the interesting part is if we pick, write a note and we pick just the right length, we'll say something like that. And now we look at the user, we can see we overwrote not only the username, but the role as well. And so if we, uh, let's see, delete the user, uh, save a note and let's see if I can remember off the top of my head. I think it's, I think it's 24. So we'll do copy one, two, like that. And then we do admin. And now we view our user. We can see we are now an admin. Uh, and now if I do backup notes, and whoa, there's all sorts of stuff, right? There's all those errors. Um, it's trying to call, uh, trying to access this op notes, which doesn't exist. If I run on the on the host, on the actual gopher, it does. Um, but it's having all these issues with tar. In fact, if we exit here, and we run strings on notes, and we grep for tar space, so we don't get things like start. Um, we get the command that's actually being run, and it's being run with no uh, full path, so I can set my path, set my uh, path variable to include the current uh, the current folder, put a malicious binary or malicious script in the folder called tar, run this, and I get shell. Um, cool. So there's the quick overview of uh, you know five less than five minutes on what the binary does. We want to look at it in Ghidra and take a look and see what's happening. Um, I haven't literally not done any of this yet, so let's see. We'll do a new project, non shared, uh, location, not flare on. Let's go into Gopher, uh, make a Hydra folder, like that, and we'll call the project notes. 
And we will control I to import. Hack the box. Too many folders in here. Go for I know I have a go. Oh wait, no, not go. We're in the I have that's why, because I'm here on the desktop. Notes right here. No file provider system system provider. Um that was weird. Let's try that again. Home, Gopher, Notes. Work fine. Okay. Uh, we will accept the defaults. We will hit OK. We will double click to get it into the Explorer. And now we can take a look. If we want to analyze it, analyze it, run the default. Progress is happening down here. It's already done. Um, I am going to pause right now so that I can uh, make my font bigger. Okay, um, in case you're interested, if you go to uh, edit options and then under listing display, so that's this display right here, uh, I can make this bigger. So maybe like 18, that can be too big. Go with that. And then this is the decompiler display. So we'll pick decompiler display. Of course, it's a completely different interface here. Uh, font, go with 18. <coughs> Okay, so um, let's go ahead and jump in. We got a main function identified. We'll start there, and we're going to want to jump over here. I, I might come back to the assembly, but like you know, we're going to work out how to decompile. Um, <clears throat> so there's uh, three variables here that are used uh, initiate initialized at the top: local one C, local ten, and local one eight. Um, we'll keep it. We'll want to keep these two, especially, are set to be pointers. So um, we'll keep those in mind. Uh, it looks like local 1c is actually what's used. Let's see, we can look at here, double click on that and see uh, percent %d. So basically what this is going to do is printf, it's going to print the menu, put puts and then print the menu, and then it's going to look, read in a digit um, or a number in stored in local 1c. So we can read in this variable input. Um, then it's going to call a switch on input. It looks like we're all, it's all in one function. Wow, okay, cool. Um, so case one, which was uh, create a username, we're going to malloc 28 bytes, um, hex 28, so that's 40 bytes, and we're going to store that in here, so we'll call local variable 10 uh, name pointer. As long as that works, we're then going to set initialize mode the first, the first uh, 24 bytes to zero, and then we're going to set this mem set the name pointer uh, plus 18. Oh, so we're, then we're gonna then we're gonna set the next last 10. I don't know why we do that two steps. Uh, we're gonna call this get UID variable. Um, and what is that? Halt bad data. So I don't know exactly what that does, but if it equals to zero, we're gonna get uh, let's see, this looks like a D M I N. So we have admin here, and this is probably U S E R just judging backwards. Um, I wish Kedra had better utilities for stack strings. If you know of a good way to make this show up as admin and user, uh, please leave me a comment. Cause that would be really helpful. Um, so you can see <clears throat> we're putting at an offset of 18 bytes. We're putting the role in. So the role is actually going into this same buffer. We buff, we create 40 bytes and then we, uh, put the role 10, 18 bytes into it, or I guess I should speak. I'll just always talk hex. 28 bytes and then 18 in, we put the role. Um, and so here's our two roles. Then we say, choose a username. Uh, it's probably another. So this is gonna be 23 byte string. You can see over here. Um, I just double click on this. This is a global thing. Um, we could redefine this as a uh, say data string. So you can see it's percent %23s. So it's gonna read a string of up to 23 bytes and store it in name pointer. Uh, and then it's going to break and we'll get to the bottom. So, so we've read in the username and we've got this name pointer. Um, so if the name pointer is void, first create a user. Uh, otherwise, we're going to print username name pointer and username role um, with the expectation that there feels like it's expecting there to be a null on the end of this that gets written. Um, all right, so that's where we get those. Case three is where we delete it. Um, we're going to if it exists, we're going to free the name pointer. So we're going to go actually give that memory back to the heap. Great. What we don't then do is set name pointer to void. And that's the vulnerability right there. Um, 
So then in case four here, we have, again, this is where we're going to create a note. So we name this variable note pointer. Uh, so we malloc, we get 28 bytes out of the uh, heap, which could be the same 28 bytes we just freed. Um, we set it to zero. Uh, we then have the note pointer. Oh, that fails. Okay, so we have to write our note. What are we going to scan here? The up to 39. Uh, S. Interestingly, uh, that is 39 bytes, not... Oh, yeah, we're doing 40 bytes. Okay, so that's fine. Yes, that's the same. Um, that string. <laughs> and then we, in case 5, we just print the note. Case 6, we just print something else. Case 7, which was delete a note. So here we do it correctly. We free the, the memory and we get rid of the pointer. The pointer becomes null, so we can't use it anymore. Um, and so that's the real challenge here is that we can write over this memory, but then when we go to actually look at it, I guess we'll see it here. Um, when we compare, what is the name pointer plus 18? Is it admin? Well, when our note just completely overwrote that memory. So sure, why not? Um, and that's when we get the access granted, the set UID, we call uh, tar like this. And uh, that is the whole binary. Um, so nothing super complicated here, but it's always useful to uh, walk through and understand. Even, even though I was able to solve this just by playing with it and sort of tracking what was weird and seeing that I overflowed. And, you know, I, I, when I first solved this, I literally just tried these in order. I created a user. I showed the information and deleted the user. I wrote a note. And then when I showed the user information again, I saw that my stuff had already overwritten the role. And I was like, what is going on? Um, so I solved it without having to reverse engineer, but it's always useful to be able to come in here and just sort of give a quick rundown of what is going on, look at Ghidris, see how it feels. Um, we could jump into GDB and actually look at these pointers and see how um, the name pointer ends up pointing to the same space. The reason that happens is, so let's let's think about through our uh, exploit real quick. We come in here and we create a username. So we get the name pointer set to, we ask the heap, malloc says, hey heap, give me some memory on the heap um, that I can use and we store that in name pointer. Then when we run three, which is the next step, we free that. We say, hey, hey, heap, I'm done with this memory, back to you. Then we come back here to four and we say, hey, heap, I need 28 bytes again. And the heap's gonna say, oh, well, sitting here, my first thing to give you is the 28 bytes you had last time. So here you go again, here's those same 28 bytes. And now note pointer is pointing at those 28 bytes. And because we didn't free, we didn't actually null out the, uh, what did I call it, name pointer, name pointer also points at those 28 bytes. So we have two different pointers pointing at those 28 bytes. And that, that's a problem. That's almost never good, unless you really know what you're doing, unless there's some reason you're doing it. Um, so then when we come down here to eight and we say, you know, so that allows us, when we write to this note pointer, we can write whatever we want. And we now have control to write what is gonna be at this pointer plus 18. The assumption of the author here is that we don't control that. And that's why, you know, it gets set here. And if we set it here, it can, you know, we're only ever gonna be user. Oh, get UID, it's literally calling the system call. I struggled with this earlier, but that's, so. Anyway, if you're root, you get to be admin. If you're not root, you're not admin. Yeah, okay. Um, so anyway, that's the exploit. And then down here, this is simple enough. It's, we just, we, we need to be, you know, user bin tar or wherever the path to tar is to make that secure. So um, thanks for joining me today. I'm gonna call it here. This was a quick walkthrough of the binary from the gopher box on Hack the Box. I have a blog post with the whole solve for gopher. The first half of it is much harder. Um, and Ollie will include that in the links below. Um, thank you so much for hanging out with me today and sticking around till the end. I really appreciate it. And uh, I'll talk to you next time.